Was good, y'all. Jira is almost upon us, so we have to talk about it. A lot of you will obviously be pulling on the Praetis Jira banner. And now the big question is how sad or how happy should you be if you pull her instead of the big boy or if you pull both together? So we'll be talking about her strength, her limitations, uh, her awakenings, and obviously what kind of relevance she has in what kind of content and overall what can she do. So let's get straight into her. We'll go through the kit briefly and then we'll get into the discussion part or discussion part. So she increases her max HP by 30% and the higher her health, the more damage she takes. That's what her talent states. She does normal uh, damage to a single unit. And then she right here has this Define Reprise where for every three basic attacks, her fourth one will deal 200% damage and also defense penetrating damage equal to 100% total damage the hero has taken previously. And that damage won't be higher than 150% of her max HP. Then you have the mark of retribution. So basically she inflicts this retribution mark on one enemy. And if she attacks the target that is inflicted with retribution, she does damage equal to 4% of her own max HP. And also then the damage received from enemies not inflicted with retribution is reduced by 30%. So um, also retribution allows her to take 30% more damage. So the way it works is, let's imagine, imagine her getting hit by three units. The first one does 130% and the other two only do 70% damage. So overall, at least in the crowd and the more units she blocks, the less damage she takes in a sense. Then right here we have um, we have arena damage where she just does increased damage. We have triumphant resolve. When activated, restores 75% HP immediately. Doing the skill effect increases max HP by 60%. Damage rate increases by 175 and attack interval by 30 or lasting for 20 seconds. And as soon as you activate it twice, it turns permanent. So overall, she just gets a crap ton of HP and she uh, does more damage, but also attacks slower. So obviously something you can't forget about her is her ridiculous base stat. So we have 31,497 HP, which is probably the most HP in the game. We have 6,300 attack, which is fighter levels of attack. She is a fighter. We have 2,200 uh, defense, which is a bit low, but still rather high for a fighter. The magic resistance is terrible, but that makes sense because only mages do not have terrible resistances. She does actually get something very interesting and that is something quite unique, I guess, to dual faction units. You get both buffs from uh, the gallery. So right here, her respawn deployment minus five comes from the fact that she's a northerner. So yeah. Um, here, let's have a look at basic attributes. You can see she gets 400 HP and 100 attack from collection progress. But yeah, uh, now comes the first limitating part and that is um, to block. Yeah, she is a fighter. She is a fighter, so she can only block two. And if you then do give her um, a soul drainer, if it that what's it still called, she will go up to three block. And yeah, uh, artifact, uh, no, uh, attack interval wise, she has this kind of standard fighter interval of 2.6. And the rest of the stats are also pretty standard. Interestingly enough, she generates, um, let's have a look at the numbers. She generates 10 rage region per basic attack and she only gets five rage region if she does attack. So, Honestly, let's first have a look at the build, right? The way you can build her and the way her kit works. Let me preface this by saying her kit is unique. The way you can play her is unique. And she's finally a hero that you can build with HP, but then actually hits hard. So she's no Azor, she's no Rock, she's no... Um, who else is kind of disappointing? She's no George, Jorge, Jorge, whatever, right? So the way you can build her and the best set for her is obviously going to be the Glacier set. So the Glacier set with HP main stat and then preferably if you can really really min max it, you do want to also have attack percent as a subset in there. That's when it can really get crazy. But finding a piece like this is like a one in a million, right? So the main important stat on her is going to be HP and you're going to use that HP to take advantage of the gains and attack bonus equal to 6% max HP when deployed. Right, that's kind of when you wanna 
uh, what you want to take advantage of. And also it's going to make her tanky. So she's going to be a tank, but she's also going to be able to hit hard. That's the plan. And that's also why we have on the left side right here gear that has attack percent, crit rate, attack speed and attack bonus. And also attack percent, crit rate, crit damage and HP bonus, right? So this HP bonus obviously helping with more tankiness. So overall we have around 250% HP, uh, around 100% extra attack, 50% defense, 300 attack speed, 100% crit rate and 28 crit damage. So honestly overall Jira is a very stat hungry unit. There's a lot of different ways you can build it. Like for example you could go full it, you could go full HP and then just rely on the benefits from the Glacier set or you could mix HP with um with the tech percent then you have the choice between going crit damage and crit rate heavy or going crit rate and attack speed heavy or going rage region heavy so she gets into old faster there's a lot of, honestly there's a lot of ways you can potentially build this but for example have a look at hp percent with the tech attack speed and uh yeah that's where we're at finding pieces that for example i guess the best piece possible would be this. I guess this would probably be, be the most go to Jira piece you can find but find pieces that are on the glacier set have attack, have attack speed, have crit rate and crit damage. It's just <laughs> it gets ridiculous but it doesn't mean that you can't actually um, use her in different ways and oh that is interesting we can finally see what healing effect does. Grants extra healing uh, multiplier to increase the hero's healing amount during battle. Yeah, again, once more healing effect only works for heroes that heal and not heroes that get healed. So yeah, uh, straight off the bat, stat-wise you can build it with a lot of stuff. You can change a lot of things and she's rather complex in a sense. But uh, out of out, honestly, out of all the heroes her sets are the most amazing her attack is correct her hp is high and she yeah her defense is still rather high for that so artifact wise kind of the artifact you have a lot of choices you could for example go with the wailing skull if you want to rely on her incredible uh, in, on her incredible stats you could be using um this artifact right here key of the forsaken to give her even more hp and then some extra attack but most of the time you'll probably be relying on Lunacy Visor to take her block up from that fighter level to the tank level. Because honestly the way most content works is you go in and it starts off at least when it's like Void Drift stages or uh, campaign stages. It starts off and it sends in three units and these three units are mainly going to run past your fighter. So you place down a tank to block it to use a ranged unit to uh, use a ranged fighter whatever. But uh, overall that's kind of the spirit that in most cases you are somewhat required to have that three block to block three units. So yeah, um, that's that's kind of the thing which, which makes her have a few issues, right? The fact that she can't block four. So let's, let's have a look at where is it even important that she has or doesn't have four block. All right, so content talking time. Obviously for artifact material rate, she's amazing. You can use her as the tank, but she can also pump out numbers. Artifact material rate, she's amazing, but honestly, we're we at the point where we need more artifact material rate stages, or it gets kind of pointless to talk about, because I feel like most people at this point already have cleared, um, cleared AMR, or at least are getting closer to it, and Jira isn't the one to make a difference. Resource rates, honestly, resource rates, yes, she's going to be good, but it's not that crucial. Promotion rates, yes, she's going to be cr good, but that's not that crucial. Tight, tight, she's actually amazing, because let's link back to the way tight works, and that is the fact that um, BP is crucial, BP is king, and Jira is the king of BP. Now, why, why would I say Jira is the king of BP? There's one unit that, especially for you GVG boys out there, is very relevant, right? And that unit is gonna be um, Uridan or Uridan because he has ridiculous amounts of HP and he can get ridiculous amounts of HP. But what if I were to tell you that Jira is basically Uridan 2.0? 
She's not stronger than Uridin, sadly, but she gets a ridiculous and a ridiculous amount of uh, BP from gear. So let's just uh, drip her out with a couple of gear pieces. Like, um, like for example, uh, 83%, yeah, like for example, right here. And then we add on top of that a Wailing Skull, right? You can push her uh, BP a bit higher, a bit lower, but you'll be somewhere in the 106 to 110k mark when you're looking at an A0, right? At A5, you're at 121,000. And uh, here, if we swap out the artifact at A0, you're looking at around 109k BP and 109 to 110k BP. So absolutely amazing unit to affiliate in GVG. So GVG, just when it comes to affiliation, BP, she's a monster. But uh, that's still not the main part. Let's have a look at gear rates. Now, gear rate one, you can place her in front of the wall, but trying to keep her alive in stage 21 is pretty fucking difficult. And she can't hit from behind the wall because she only has one range. Gear rate two, yeah, sure, you can use her as a tank, but overall in gear rate two, it's more important to have invulnerability and do more but she can definitely help us struggling dps when it comes to actually doing damage damage while being tanky and gear rate 3 obviously she has no point because she can't hit air now gear dungeon 1 that's kind of where the issues come in and that's the fact that oh yeah as you can see we have uh, stage 10 but if we look at gear rate 1 uh the problem is her block Right, the problem is her block and that's the fact that she can't block at the bottom because she only has three block and she can't block at the top because she only has three block. Now you can make up for her block being only three by running someone else that has a block of five. So you can make her work here and the fact that she does damage might very well be very helpful. But overall Especially if you have someone that blocks for five, the units are basically going to go one, two, three, four, five around the unit and then you run into an issue where you can't enter heal them. So it might be more trouble than it's worth to actually try to make her work here. And then we have uh, gear dungeon uh, stage 10 of gear dungeon uh, 2. And let me tell you something about gear dungeon 2. It is pretty, it's pretty sad. <laughs> it's pretty sad, Gear Dungeon 2 overall. But yeah, uh, let's have a look at map info once more. So bottom lane, you do not need someone that does damage because you have Volker. You do not need someone to block because you got Edith. And right here, you do not need someone like her because she actually does a good amount of physical damage and it comes to bite her into the ass. Because if she hits someone that is, um, if she hits the clone that is physical resistant, she actually does a bunch of damage against it. So she actually counter heals, which means someone like Oleg that barely does any um, physical damage is actually better in her place there. So up until stage 7, stage 8, she works pretty great. She can uh, solo the side quite easily. But uh, in stage 10, she isn't really all that relevant and you're running into more issues than it's worth trying to make her work. So now that only leaves a couple of things. So there's now this thing called the war room where you have all your content like put in. So for example, the crusade, the tide, the uh, gate boss one, gate boss two and void drift as well as void drift epilogue. Uh, Void Drift. So she's gonna be pretty amazing in Void Drift. She's a strong tank and she's also gonna be amazing in uh, events because she's gonna be able to hit hard while being a tank and she's also obviously pretty pretty good in campaign because she's a tank because she hits hard. So all these kind of places where you play content but it's nothing like at the highest competitive end game level she's gonna shine. You're going to be able to have a lot of fun with her. Mmm... And yeah, let's let's get to the next one. So Drake's Chasm, Guild Boss 1. You shouldn't use her there. There's no point to doing so. Now to the part where it's interesting and that is Guild Boss 2. You are actually able to use her if you're running an 
Abita ecosystem because in an Abita ecosystem you can use her as the tank while still having her deal damage while still being part of the Arbiter faction and then also uh, now, now comes the interesting part and that is Awakenings. Awakening wise she has this beautiful Awakening A1 where it says dealing damage to enemies will consume a stack of Radiant Erosion on them to deal additional damage equal to 4% of the hero's max HP and inflict stun. Now some of you might already be going like whoa it's a stun. If we get her A1, we can use her as a tank in Samra, but, but, number one, you need that, you need that Arbiter ecosystem around her with people that provide Radiant Erosion, like, for example, Praetis with his ultimate, or Alistair with his ultimate, but there comes the clutch part. These characters also interact with Radiant Erosion, especially, for example, uh, um, for example, uh, here, um, Alistar, where it says that if the target is inflicted with three stacks of Radiant Erosion, he has an increased chance to deal extra damage. Also, uh, on Awakening, here right here, when reaching full talent stacks, basically take has a 15% chance of inflicting a stack of Radiant Erosion. So, if you have him at A1, obviously he works quite well with her. But then, the issue. The issue is Praetis, because... Praetis at A1. I know it's a lot of hypotheticals and having people at A1, but if you have a Jira at A1, a Praetis at A1, especially with the Soul Soul, isn't that far away. This is where the issue comes in, and that is when basic attacks deals damage to targets inflicted with Radiant Erosion, he restores Rage, and that is pretty, pretty fucking good and pretty, pretty fucking strong. But what if, what if there was a character that eats up all the Radiant Erosions by consuming them through de just dealing damage yeah that's when you kind of run into an issue where yes you get the extra stun but you're taking way too much away from um from from praetis so honestly as an advice i would say if you if you already have a Praetis, it is absolutely uh, absolutely absolutely not worth it to pull for Jira. If you pull her in the future, that's nice. But get Praetis with the Soulstone to A1, it's great. You do not need to pull for an extra Praetis on the Praetis Jira banner. So overall, she is pretty unique. She is a pretty unique character, but someone that is even more unique, that is even stronger in the Arbiter faction is going to be Ingrid. So I would highly recommend saving your summons for that banner because it's already confirmed for August, which is ridiculous. So this has been my kind of review over the issues I found with her, the way you built her. But there is a non-zero chance that I might be wrong over uh, about a couple of things I've said here because her kit is that complex. So yeah, peace.